I want to say something before I get to my main point. Why come the people that I like speaking to, the people that I like being around, the people I like to spend time with, only stays in my life for a short time period. But the people that are really difficult, sometimes difficult to speak with, sometimes difficult to deal with, those people are always around. Like, they are always in my life, no matter what. That is not fair. <laughs> Anyways, let me speak about enemies. And I know that this is going to be difficult to accept, accept, but we have to start treating our enemies as our friends to a certain extent. I am not saying that you have to have them over your home every single day and stuff like that. But we have to be friendly with our enemies, which is very hard for many to accept. Let's go to Romans 12, 19 through 20. Actually, let me go to Romans 12 and 19, I believe. So let's scroll down to verse 19. Or 20, actually. Yes. So for right now, focus on this. Let me highlight it. Let's make it green. Let's do it. Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. So let's break this down. Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. I know that when you have an enemy, you don't want anything to do with your enemy. I know I don't, but as I stated, we have to start treating our enemies as our friends. Even if your enemy have stabbed you right in the back 200 times. Mm, 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 and, and just grind it in there. <laughs> we still have to treat them friendly. We still have to be friendly to them. So if they hunger, we have to feed them. Hey, Kevin, you know, I am broke. <sighs> if there is something you really wanted, you are going to save money for it you are going to find a way to get it. So if you can do that, you can feed your enemies as well, if they come to you. I am not saying to go out your way, which you can do, and try to feed everyone that is hungry, which you can do, but I am not saying that. If your enemy comes to you and say, hey, I know that I stabbed you right in the back 200 times. I know that is what I did. <laughs> I am so hungry. Please give me something to eat. What if you say no? Hey, Kevin, what if I say no? I believe you will be cursed by God for that or you are going to get punished by God for that. We have to understand everything in this life is a test. There are no coincidences. Everything that is happening to you is happening for a reason. Everything that comes my way is happening for a reason. 
when people come to my life, it is happening for a reason. When they leave, it is happening for a reason. There is no chances. There is no such thing as chance. There is no such thing as bad luck and good luck. It is all about what God wants. No coincidences. Once you start to understand that, you are going to do better in life and pass more tests other than continue to fail it and have to go through it over and over and over again. No such thing as a coincidence. We have to pass these tests. God is bringing that enemy to you to see what you are going to do. If you are going to pass that test, he is passing, he is giving to you that day. This is happening for a, for a reason. I had people who did me wrong come back and ask for my help. For instance, it was this one person that treated me really wrongly. And a short time after, this person asked for my help. And like, I was thinking, what? <laughs> you were asking for my help when you treated me that wrong. Like, <laughs> are you crazy, you know? But what I did, I am like, no. I mean, I, I was like, hey, this is a test and God is testing me right now to see what I am going to do. So this person asked me to do something for them and I did it. And they asked for more help and I did it. I hurried and did what they asked of me. Because I know or I knew that I was being tested. And I knew that if I did not do it, I would be punished as well as that person. No coincidences, none. Now, what the average person would have done, they would have said, no, or no, I am not doing it. You did me wrong. So you just have to suffer. So what? And then God would have punished you. <laughs> I'm serious. I am serious. Things happen for a reason. There are no coincidences, none, zero. Once you figure that out, your life with God is going to get easier. God does things to test you. Hey, let me get this person or let me allow this person to do bad things to you. Afterward, let me get that person to ask you for help. Because what sense does it make for a person to dog you out, then come back and ask for your help? What sense is there in that? That has to be God testing you. We have to take our minds off the earthly and think spiritually. Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. Why? Because you are being tested. If he thirst, give him drink. Why? Because you are being tested. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. So what does that mean? Heap coals of fire on his head. Does that mean, does that, mean that you are going to get coals of fire and place it on that person's head? No. What that means, give me a second please, wow. What that means, when they continue to do you wrong, and you are continuing consistently to do them right, soon they are going to feel shame. 
they are going to feel ashamed. And soon, yes, they are going to get punished. And there is a large chance that they are going to change and treat you kindly. I pray this makes sense. Let's go to verse 19. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. So when someone does you wrong, avenge not yourselves. Don't do anything, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I have it highlighted. I will repay, saith the Lord. So the reason why we continue to do our enemies right is because God is going to avenge us. If we take revenge for ourselves, God is going to punish us. So when someone treats you wrong, you treat them right. Why? Because God is going to avenge you. But what if you are silly enough to get your own revenge? What is going to happen to you? Your silly tail is going to be punished as well. This is why I don't stress out so much when people do me wrong. Yes, I get annoyed. Yes, I get irritated. But I know that soon God is going to punish my enemies. So they, they can take from me, they can talk behind my back, they can stab me right in the back. I know really soon God is going to punish them. I pray that makes sense. So even if it may be hard to treat my enemies right or be kind to them or say anything to them, I know that I should and I have to because if I don't do what is right, I am going to get punished. So, hey, you can lie on me. You can steal from me. You can slash my tires and blow up my car. And I am not going to do anything to you. <laughs> I am going to give you a thumbs up <laughs> because I know that God is going to punish that tail. <laughs> God is going to get you. So I don't have to fight you. I don't have to egg your house. I don't have to punch you or anything like that because God is going to punish you. All I have to do when you treat me wrong, continue to treat you right. Do you see how that works? I don't have to get my hands dirty. I can just watch God punish you. I am not going to say that I am going to be happy and stuff like that because I believe when someone is going through a tough time, it is not right for us to be happy about it. Or when you see God punishing a person, like you can't be happy about that. I believe that is wrong. I could be wrong about that, but I believe that is wrong. But I don't have to do anything. Just continue to treat you right, no matter what. So I pray that this makes sense. Continue to treat your enemies right, even when they don't deserve it. Treat them as if they are your friend. Like for my enemies and the things that I have been doing, I've been giving them things over and over and over again. Giving them things that a person on the sideline would say, Hey Kevin, why are you doing these good things for these people when they have talked behind your back and treated you wrongly and done many bad things to you. I am doing it because this is a test. How far are you going to go to treat your enemies nicely? How far? 
Since I know that I am being tested, how far are you willing to go? How far are you willing to show God like, hey, these people treated me wrongly, but hey, look at what I am doing for them. Look how far I am going to treat my enemies. You have to know you are going to reap what you sow. So when you are doing good to your enemies, you are going to get blessed by God. So how can you lose? Even if they take things from you, steal from you, take things that cost money, like $200 or more, you are going to be rewarded for everything, every good thing that you do. This is why it is saying, avenge not yourselves, or in 20, therefore if thine enemy hunger, feed him. Why? Because it is going to pay off. If he thirst, give him drink. Why? Because it is going to pay off. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. And also, you are going to reap what you sow. The law of reaping and sowing never ends. Everything you do, everything you think, everything you say, you are going to reap what you sow. This is why you have to treat your enemies as if they are your friends. I am not saying that you have to talk to them for 10 hours every day. I am not saying that you have to uh, do all of these things, but treat them nicely. Why? Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. So even if you don't see them get punished by God, it is happening. Why? Because this is saying God is going to do it. And we have to have faith in what God says, whether we see it or not, whether we hear about it or not. I pray this makes sense. <laughs> my lord this is why I mean I'm telling you when you do what the Bible says to do you are going to elevate much more further in God and you are going to see things more in a clear way then you are going to begin to understand why God tells you to do certain things now I don't understand everything of course not but the more I follow the Bible the clearer things become transition your mind off the earthly knowledge and transition your mind to the things of God. Because if your understanding is only about this earth, how are you going to understand what the Bible is saying? You have to transition your way of thinking. So I pray that this makes sense. God bless.